Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dylan and I'm a cycling coach here at Carmichael Training Systems in Brevard, North Carolina. Today we're talking about ketogenic and high fat diets. And we'll be taking a look at the science to see whether or not these diets can improve your cycling performance. I'll be giving my interpretation of the data and my recommendation to my athletes when they ask about ketogenic diets. My last video touched on the topic of getting the body adapted to using fat as a fuel source instead of carbohydrates. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Fasting is one way to do this, at least in theory. Another way to get your body fat adapted is through diet, namely the ketogenic diet, which has been growing in popularity as a weight loss strategy. We won't be looking at the ketogenic diet's weight loss claims today, but we will be looking to see whether or not this diet can improve athletic performance. For those of you that don't know, the ketogenic diet is an extremely high fat diet with 70 to 80% of calories coming from fat, 15 to 20% coming from protein, and less than 5% coming from carbs. After adapting to this diet, your body will be able to use ketones as a fuel source instead of glucose. What this means for athletes is that you don't have to rely as heavily on carbohydrates and you could see better endurance. Let's jump into the science and see if these claims are backed up. So first of all, let's make it clear that carbohydrates do improve endurance exercise performance. One study out of Maastricht University using 19 endurance trained cyclists found a 2.3% performance increase in a 60 minute time trial when subjects were fed a carbohydrate solution over a placebo. Another study published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise found a 15% increase in performance in a 95 minute interval session when subjects were fed carbohydrates four hours before versus not. In a meta-analysis of 88 randomized crossover studies on carbohydrate consumption and endurance performance concluded that carbohydrates do show a large benefit to performance. I talked about these studies in my fasted training video, but they're worth mentioning here again. Carbohydrates will increase your performance. However, none of these studies looked at subjects who habitually consumed a high fat or ketogenic diet. And the question is, will consuming a ketogenic diet reduce your need for carbohydrates and therefore increase your performance? One study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology took 19 elite race walkers and put them on a standard high carb diet, a periodized carb diet, or a low carb high fat diet. When testing their 10K race performance before and after, they found that the high carb and periodized carb group improved their time, while the high fat group did not. Another study looking at the ketogenic diet's influence on performance in experienced off-road cyclists took eight subjects and had them perform a continuous exercise protocol after consuming a ketogenic diet and a standard diet for four weeks. They found that the subjects had a significantly higher max workload and lactate threshold with the standard diet, and the study concluded that the ketogenic diets decreased the ability to perform high-intensity work. One strategy of keto dieters is to regularly consume a high fat diet and then carb load the day before the race. This way they get the best of both worlds being fat adapted and have carbohydrate availability for any high intensity efforts they might need to do during the race. This method was put to the test in a study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. The study took eight well-trained cyclists and had them consume a normal carb rich diet or a high fat diet for six days followed by one day of carb loading. They found that the high fat diet did increase fat oxidation and there was no significant difference in 100K time trial performance. However, times were three minutes and 44 seconds slower when subjects were fed the high fat diet. Subjects also performed significantly worse in 1K sprints after eating the high fat diet. Similar results were found in a study published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism. 20 subjects were put into either a high fat diet group or a control group for six weeks. The high fat group did increase their fat oxidation during exercise, but their 30 second sprint and 45 minute time trial performance decreased while the carb fed group did not. And these results are echoed in one review on carbohydrate dependence in endurance athletes that concluded that despite renewed popular interest in high fat, low carb diets for endurance sports, Fat-rich diets do not spare carbohydrates or improve training capacity and performance, but instead directly impair rates of muscle glycogenolysis and energy flux. The review also looked at what elite athletes actually eat, stating that if high-fat diets were an advantage, then the best athletes would be doing it, but they are not. 
Kenyan distance runners and Tour de France cyclists have been reported to consume between 7 and 12 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per day. Pretty much the exact opposite of a ketogenic diet. So things are looking pretty bad for the ketogenic diet, but there are some studies that show benefits. One such study published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology took five endurance trained subjects and fed them a high fat or high carb diet for two weeks. They found that 30 second power output was not significantly different for the two interventions and that time to exhaustion at a moderate intensity was actually significantly longer for the high fat group. These sort of studies are rare, however, and most studies that paint high fat diets in a positive light conclude that high fat diets don't impair performance, implying that a high fat diet is at least as good as a high carb diet, but not better. One study looking at 16 endurance trained cyclists in either a high fat or standard diet group for 15 days found that the high fat group did significantly improve fat oxidation although 40k time trial performance was not significantly different between the two groups. Another study on five well-trained cyclists after consuming a standard diet and a ketogenic diet found that there was no significant difference in time to exhaustion between the two groups and stated that the most striking result of the study was the ability of highly trained endurance athletes to maintain their level of training and performance on a ketogenic diet. True ketogenic dieters, and not just your standard high-fat dieter, may have noticed some problems with these studies, namely the time for adaption. A review on ketogenic diets and physical performance stated that there are no studies to date that carefully examine the optimum length of this keto-adapted period, but it is clearly longer than one week and is likely three to four weeks. Other factors that high-fat studies may not consider are mineral intake, namely sodium and potassium, as well as optimum protein intake, which can be both too much or too little. The review concluded that a ketogenic diet shouldn't negatively affect most forms of exercise, with the exception of anaerobic or high-intensity work. Ketone body supplements have also been gaining popularity as a method of gaining the benefits of fat adaption for exercise. However, there doesn't seem to be any evidence that they work. A review on ketone bodies and exercise performance concluded that there is no evidence to support the use of ketone bodies as an ergogenic aid. So that's the science for you. Some show that a ketogenic diet works better or at least as well as a carbohydrate diet, but most show a negative effect of the diet on endurance exercise performance. Even if some of these studies set up less than optimally, the balance of evidence still supports using a carbohydrate-rich diet instead of a ketogenic diet for endurance sports performance. Even if you were able to adapt your body to use fat as a fuel source instead of carbohydrates, what would be the point if your performance would go down? Yeah, you would be able to eat less gels during your training sessions or your race, but you wouldn't go as fast, which is the ultimate goal. One thing that's certain is that your ability to do high intensity work will decrease on a ketogenic diet, and even the longest of ultra endurance cycling events have moments of very high intensity. For these reasons, I don't recommend a ketogenic diet to any of my athletes. Have you given the ketogenic diet a try or know someone who has? Leave your experience in the comments section below. If you like this video, give it a like and share it with your keto friends or anyone who might be interested. Subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for more coaching content. Interested in getting a coach? Shoot me an email at djohnson at trainwright.com.